there's no doubt Manic Miner set the Specky standard, but its sequel rewrote it. It's also one of the most poked games ever. Jet Set Willy was huge and fantastic, and later went on to feature in 1001 video games to play before you die. It also featured the world's first mod, where your Sinclair added an extra level. Jet Set Willy was also probably the first commercial game to have a patch produced, after the publisher initially claiming that the bug was actually a feature. Night Law, back in 1984, gave early gamers a look into the possible future 3D worlds with its isometric look and feel. It became a cult classic in no time at all. In fact, it was so good back in 1984 that everything else looked like the work of amateurs. In fact, Night Law was released about one year after it was finished. Ultimate felt the new isometric graphics would hurt the sales of the 2D game Saber Wolf. So sadly, they held it back. Load Runner presents the player with 150 screens of platforms, ladders and ropes. It was also one of the earliest games to include a level editor. The original Load Runner proved so popular a coin-up version was commissioned and appeared in 1984, housed in its own cabinet and complete with artwork. In January 1985, Crash awarded it 81% and they said a very good game with plenty of playability and addictive qualities. Operation Wolf was such a great arcade conversion that Crash and Computer and Video Games both awarded it 91%. In fact, Crash went on to say a great conversion of a popular coin-up which couldn't be bettered. Irrespective of the graphical capabilities of the ZX Spectrum, the conversion is so close that you might as well be playing the coin-up. In fact, your Sinclair went on to say, beg, steal or borrow a copy of this game. R-Type arrived at the perfect time, when graphics were starting to get a bit good and gameplay was being perfected. Even today, R-Type on the ZX Spectrum remains the ultimate 2D shooter. Sadly, there was a mastering error on the original release for the ZX Spectrum, which meant you didn't get level 8. That was later remedied when R-Type saw a budget release. This arcade conversion by Bob Pape was so good that Your Sinclair awarded it 98% in January 1991. Not only one of the best games ever made for the ZX Spectrum, but the ZX Spectrum version alone sold over 350,000 copies, making this one of the most successful 8-bit games of all time. And if that wasn't enough, in October 2004, issue 9, Retro Gamer voted it the 46th best game of all time, according to a reader's vote. Whilst Crash awarded it 91%, it was Personal Computer Games in August 1984 that gave it 100%. You play as Eric the Scamp, a typical 80s schoolboy whose parents purchased a ZX Spectrum for his homework. Your school report is due, apparently it's really bad, you've been playing games and not doing homework, and now you have to steal it from the headmaster's safe. The game plays out in a seemingly real-time affair, and it's another game that made it into the 1001 video games. Adding to that, Retro Gamer in October 2004, issue 9, awarded it the 40th best game of all time. According to the magazine Retro Gamer, in issue 1, the game was Mastertronic's 24th best-selling game, selling 152,378 copies. The on-screen menu system was also inspired by the Apple Mac's interface, and the game took 5 months to develop. Now, whilst Crash gave it 95%, in January 1986, it was Sinclair User that awarded it 100%. Although ancient looking to the eye, Arcanoid boasted six levels of differing complexity. Your Sinclair in May 1987 awarded it 90%. Computer of Video Games in May 1987 also awarded it 85%. 
and it's yet another game that featured in 1001 video games that you must play before you die. It's also a fantastic innovation over the original breakout concept. Best of all, Arkanoid features power-ups, which includes a laser, a catching device, and another to slow the ball. Everyone must play Bomb Jack. It's a rite of passage. It ruled in the arcade, and it rules on the ZX Spectrum. It features a good blend of complexity and cuteness. In April 1986, Crash awarded it 92%. They said this is absolutely fantastic. It's so playable. Your Sinclair, October 1988, awarded it 90% and went on to say, a simple idea that's 100% addictive. Bubble Bobble might look a bit old now, but it still plays well. In fact, in 1991, Crash gave it 88% for the budget re-release and said, in short, Bubble Bobble is one of the most playable platform games around. In 1991, Computer and Video Games gave it 92% in their budget re-release and they said Bubble Bobble ranks as one of the best Spectrum coin conversions of all time. A thrilling racer in which you play as a cop hunting down criminals in your Porsche 928. Not only that, but after you've caught up with them, you were supposed to ram them off the road. The arcade original can still be found in rundown service stations right across the country. There's no question the ZX Spectrum arcade conversion is a Herculean effort and computer and video games in January 1990 awarded it 97%. Def Chase is in the list because in February 1992, um, Your Sinclair rated it number one in the top 100 Spectrum games of all time. Plus, it's the review from Home Computing Weekly uh, in 1984 where they gave it 100% and they said simplicity and immediacy make it most attractive and youngsters will probably find it compelling. The graphics in Dynamite Dan fell ahead of their time in 1985, especially when you consider as well the use of colour. But graphics don't always make a game and it's the sheer playability that keeps you glued to the keyboard. In 1985, Crash awarded this 94%, and then later, in 1989, on a budget re-release, they still liked it and awarded it 92%. For a time, it was one of the best games on the ZX Spectrum of its type. Graphically, Earthlight set new trends on the ZX Spectrum. Crash in June 1988 awarded it 90% and they went on to say could hopefully set a whole new trend in shoot 'em ups. Your Sinclair in 1988 awarded it 80% and they went on to say a scroller that's a cut above the rest. Most stimulating, thank you. There's no doubt about it, Earthlight is a tour de force in graphics, but more so than that, there's a compelling challenge as well. a special game in its own right and a fantastic port to the ZX Spectrum. The 128K version was enhanced uh, and it was released and introduced with three new missions and fixed a number of existing bugs. Popular Computing awarded it 100% in 1985, Your Computer in 86 100% as well, Sinclair User in 85 100% and if you owned a ZX Spectrum back in the day, this was the game no self-respecting ZX Spectrum user should live without. Raphael Seiko was the brains behind Equinox, but it wasn't until Exelon that he struck gold on the ZX Spectrum. It went down well with the critics as well. Your Sinclair in 87 awarded it 90%. Crash in 87 awarded it 90% as well. Computer and video games the same, 90%, but it's the graphics that are highly detailed, colourful and smooth that win the day. Fairlight is another one of those games that features in 1001 video games to play before you die. This version is the 1 to 8K version, which introduces music and adds some new secret locations. 
Crash in 1985 awarded this 95%, Sinclair User 100% and Popular Computing Weekly 100% as well. Sinclair User said this is one of the most complete and satisfying role playing graphic games I've ever seen. Head Over Heels is yet another game that features in the 1001 video games to play before you die. In fact, in Crash Magazine, Newsfield Readers Award, they voted it the best arcade adventure of 1987 through Reader's Choice, and it was also voted the most challenging game of 1987. But much more than that, it was a massive improvement over the tried and tested isometric game style. Hypersports is a fantastic collection of games that today's children believe Nintendo invented. But no! Dads across the country were cliff diving, swimming and clay pigeon shooting long before. It was also possible to play with your friends. And yet another game that made it into the 1001 video games you must play before you die. Crash in August 1985 awarded this one a massive 92%. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell. Until next time, bye!